feather. Um, hadn't really, I've been in and out of the streets most of my life, so. Um, How was your childhood exactly? Hey YouTube, uh, we got another one. We got Ashley. How you How you doing today? I'm all right, how about y'all? We making it, making it. Um, so let's just get started at the very beginning. Tell us about your um upbringing. Um, well, kind of a uh, single mother, a uh, good stepfather. Didn't really have a whole lot to do with my biological father. Um, mom's kind of. If we kind of toxic for each other. Um, hadn't really, I've been in and out of the streets most of my life. So, um, how was your childhood exactly? Well, let's see. How uh, abusive biological father, what I did see of him. Uh, Mom was always too afraid to do anything about it. Um, too afraid to do anything about much of anything I went through as a kid. Do you do you so, mind talking about like what kind of abuse? Uh, biological father was just uh, verbally and physically, you know, he would beat me and um, was always really emotionally and mentally abusive. Um, I went through uh, sexual abuse at 11. Do you do you feel like talking about that, the, the sexual abuse, just um, a little bit? Wasn't a whole lot to talk about babysitter's husband. Uh, you know, everybody's gonna think we're redhead. And um, you know, I told mom and she was too afraid to do anything about it. So I went back to the babysitter the next day. So he, he <laughs> never got in trouble for that? Nope. She did a date, nobody, you know, nothing was done about it. And you told your, your mother and she just showed no concern? Um, she acted real concerned when I told her, but she still sent me back the next day. Um, you know, that was mom. She's afraid of everything. You know, I confronted her about it about two years ago and it was, Ashley, what do you think they would have done? They wouldn't have done anything to him. And I'm still confused as to why she thought that, but you know, that was mom, that was the way she was. So she just put up like a wall, a defense. Mm -hmm. That's, that'd be my mom. She, uh, she was always afraid to do much of anything, you know. Um, I don't really know her background as far as the abuse but i feel sure there was some there um and she just she was always afraid of everything um my stepfather was really my rock growing up he he pretty much raised me um did the best he could by us considering he didn't have any kids of his own and you know um that was unfortunately up until about two years ago that was um not everything and then two years or so ago mom was cheating on him and I wouldn't help her cover it up so she uh, left him and told him it was my fault and he kicked me out I've been out here ever since Wow yeah I lost um, I was living in Dallas and lost my income with COVID and had to move home and you know, moved home and mom's cheating on dad and I wouldn't help and here we are <laughs> so you know <laughs> And to date, I don't think he knows that there was another man. Um, I didn't have the heart to tell him I couldn't do it to him. He loved my mom just infinitely. Um, I could, you know. If he him. get to see this video, what would you say to him or want him to know? I miss him and I love him. That would be the thing I want him to know. I miss him and I love him. Sorry. Um, I was daddy's girl. <laughs> um, that's, and that I'm, you know, that I'm okay. Um, that'd be about it. Do you have any children? I have four boys. Four boys. Wow. Are they are they here in town or are they out in uh, Texas? No, they're actually in South Carolina with my family. Um, my, well, partially with my family and partially with my husband's family. Um, my husband passed away three years ago. Um, he killed himself. And uh, my, our two children are with his parents. And then I had two from a previous marriage. And they're with my sister. So, 
Do you get to see the boys often or? I haven't heard from them since I got put in the streets about two years ago. Um, I don't really want them to know. You know, I don't want them worrying about me. My oldest one's 18. Okay. And um, when I was in South Carolina, if he thought I needed a meal, cigarettes, anything, he was there spending money and I don't, I'm not old enough for my child to be taking care of me, so I don't really want him to know um, the situation I was in. So I haven't tried to contact them. I don't want to worry. And the youngest two I haven't seen since my husband's funeral. Um, uh, his parents blame me. I blame myself, honestly. And um, I found him hanging from our child's jump rope. I kind of messed my head up pretty bad. And uh, about the time I started getting myself back on my feet to where I could take care of my kids, it COVID hit and messed my job and all up. And I've been trying to figure my way out of this mess ever since. It's kind of, I don't think anybody tells you, but it's a trap when you get out here, especially when you start flying a sign, because it's, you spend all day doing it you know, just to make enough money to get by on. And then job hunting is dang near impossible, especially if you don't have a smartphone. I just got blessed with a phone, but unfortunately it's like a burner phone, so I've still got to try to upgrade it soon, but I'm hoping that having a phone will turn into a job so I can get somewhere with it, because that's been the major kickback everywhere I've tried to get a job at is the, like the no address thing they can slide around because I've got an ID with address on it, but the no phone thing everybody's kicking back on it. got to be able to call me into work, so you know, I'm hoping that turns into a job. To, I've put in a couple other places. Been running around today, letting them know I got a phone, giving them a number. So hopefully that'll get us somewhere here soon. I don't think most people understand how difficult it is being on the street. I don't think they do either, especially not with you know the looks you get when you're flying a sign and all out here. People just they assume the worst. You know, you got to be a drug addict. You got to be this. You got to be that. And it's, People don't have a clue how difficult it really is out here. I, I, it was mentioned to me, I've been in Richmond almost a year now, and it was mentioned to me that I've lost weight since I got here. And, um, you know, there's a lot of places around here to, that do feed and all, but you struggle to get to them because it's like the buses are never right. And then if you take the time away from flying the sign, you're screwing yourself. You know, it's half the time it's used between going and getting a free meal or being able to afford you know shampoo or something you need uh, it's 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 difficult it's a difficult decision but I've always had problems with eating anyway so I skip the meals a lot more than I should and, you know um, and then people don't understand carrying I had finally gave up on carrying my whole life around because I had a book bag that weighed as much as I did for a long time that I was carrying all over town and I walk all over town and you're gonna lose weight doing that sort of thing, you know? It's, um, do you think that Richmond, like they don't, they don't do a good job of setting things up to help people get off the street? Uh, Richmond does a lot better than some places do, but there's still, Richmond has a lot of issues with it still. There's one women's shelter and that's it. And if that doesn't work out for you, which it didn't for me, um, you're kind of screwed. Um, and they keep telling me, you know, I keep catching hell from here, there, and yon, go back to the shelter, go back to the shelter. I'm not going back to the cotton picking shelter. I'm sorry. It's not happening. Um, I was in it and got kicked out because I did not have COVID. <laughs> it's wow. like, oh, um, you're in there with a group of women that are you? You know, half of them are crazy because half the half the homeless population in Richmond are you know, off. And I don't know what the story is with that. Like I said, I've been here a year, but I'm guessing there was something similar to South Carolina. The state hospital kind of closed down or something, you know. But most of the women that were in the shelter with me were off, you know, and you kind of got to deal with that, and it gets crazy. And then you got to deal with like. For women, they have an 8 p.m. curfew. Yeah. They're talking about it's dangerous in the streets. I was asleep out here last night. You're kind of screwing me by making me come in by 8 p.m., you know? Um, I know it's dangerous out here. I was asleep out there just the other day. Yeah. You know? I was like... Um, I, got, I got one more question for you. Mm -hmm. 
if you could go back to let's say your younger self let's say nine years old ten years old what would you tell yourself oh at that age uh, let's just say 13 year old self even at that age it's um do some things differently not have kids I love my kids to death, don't get me wrong, but I would not bring them into this mess if I knew what I knew now. Um, finish school. Uh, finish school, for sure. Maybe not college, because I still think that's kind of overrated, but <laughs> I would have finished high school. Um, and uh, seriously think some time into learning how to deal with stress and depression and issues that I don't think we teach our kids enough about. You know, um, I think that should be in schools. It really, really should be, because I've met an abundance of people, both homeless and not, that just have no idea how to deal with the stress. I don't, and no idea how to deal with the drama and the depression. And so, you know, that would be something I would tell my younger self, definitely, is to sink some time into learning how to deal with things. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, no I, I appreciate your time. Thank you.